This is Mirage. Mirage is a writer. Mirage loves golf, but didn't turn pro. A good thing, because he would have probably starved. He loves motorcycling, can strum and sing a bit, and is committed to nothing except a life on the road. This is Johan. Johan is a photographer. Johan is more Indian than I am, but carries a Swedish passport. Johan has lived around the world and bankrolled his travel with some pretty interesting gigs. He's picked apples, been a bartender, worked on an oil rig, before finally discovering the camera. Last year, we teamed up to travel for a year in India and chronicle our experiences. It's been quite a trek, a hell of a ride, a drive like no other, a flight to new horizons, and a voyage that we hope won't end anytime soon. Last week, keen to celebrate one year since they hit the road, Mirage and Johan sought out the biggest party they could find and came up with a New Year bash, Songkran, the Thai New Year. After wreaking mayhem on the streets of Bangkok, the duo decided to inflict their questionable brand of humor on the unsuspecting citizens of Pattaya. There on the lovely eastern seaboard of Thailand, Mirage caught up with some golfing buddies and played a couple of rounds. A thrilling prospect that even Johan couldn't resist being part of. Professional freeloaders both. The two gate crashed a cruise on a yacht booked by Mirage's playing companions and made themselves ride at home. Johan, admirably, managed to take time out from all the revelry to go and check out a world-famous monument and discovered, much to his surprise, that the Sanctuary of Truth is not an oxymoron. In spite of their best efforts and faultless behavior, Mirage and Johan were unable to raise the stock of their countrymen in Pattaya. Now, after a vacation, the two are back hard at work, traipsing about in Himachal Pradesh. The sheer terror of the brutal North Indian summer is matched in severity only by the utter glee of escaping it. By now, Johan and I are adept escape artists. By the time the mercury hit 45 degrees Celsius in the capital, we were well on our way. Ensconced in the plush cabin of a ride I'd managed to score for the trip, we coasted out of Delhi and into Punjab and Haryana. We were going to Himachal Pradesh. By the time we crossed Anandpur Sahib, the lovely Sikh pilgrimage town in the foothills, the heat had already begun to dissipate. Now there's no substitute for altitude, for elevating spirits, I say. Johan in particular seemed delirious with joy. Oh, snow capped peaks, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. The Lesser Himalayas. That unflattering moniker only makes the Daladar range even more astonishing to behold. Gobsmacked, you crane your neck up to look at this wall of ice that appears to rise out of thin air as you enter Kangra Valley in northern India. From most corners of the valley, these guardians of the galaxy are omnipresent. In the dense oak and cedar forests, on the hills facing the Dholadar mountain range, lies Dharamsala and the suburbs of Miklodganj, Bhagsunath, Dharamkot and Naddi. Dharamsala's credentials as a sanctuary which is what the name roughly translates to, rest entirely on its picturesque location and salubrious climbs. There is written record of a dharamshala or rest house that the British came across when they first arrived here in the 19th century. Deeming the area ideal for convalescence of soldiers, they wasted no time and set up a cantonment laying the foundation for the town of dharamshala as we know it today. But the city truly fulfilled the semantics, both cultural and spiritual, of its name in 1959 when the Dalai Lama, who had fled to India from Tibet, was given refuge by India and allowed to settle with his followers in Miklodganj. He's lived here ever since. Our original plan to check into a hotel in Dharamsala or Miklodganj had to be shelved after we read news reports of these towns bursting at the seams with tourists. With the heat wave in North India, you can't really hold it against people for wanting to come here. But we don't really want to add to the pressure on the resources of the city. I have found us a rustic homestay on the Kanyara Dari Road. 
Nice atmospheric room. Oh, check what that out, Jan. What is that? Oh. It's a Vion umbrella. An umbrella. What's a Vion umbrella doing here? Folks, I think this might just be our... Protecting people from bad weather? No, this, <laughs> you know what this is? This is Vion Traveler's Game of Thrones Starbuck coffee moment. <laughs> coffee cup moment. So, well, uh, well, happens to all great shows, folks. Bloopers. <laughs> Mountains, huh? uh. So since we're shooting, we might as well show people yeah. where we are staying for the benefit of everybody who's stuck in Delhi huh. in the heat. Huh. And we are staying at the Ballu Homestay, which is a well, which is like a cheapie and for budget backpackers and extremely atmospheric. So let's go check it out. How did I land up in that in the most rotten room in the house? This is my question. I woke up with two doggies sleeping next to me. So if you come to the Ballu Homestay, lock your doors. I mean, I don't mind doggies in bed. I mean, it's happened to me many times before and they're really lovely good then. If you don't want to share your bed with them, then kindly bolt it at night. Cute little gate. So this is a 120 year old house, mud house that's been semi-restored. It's definitely inhabitable. We spent the night there and you might get an occasional caterpillar and some insects, but it's lovely. What a location. Afternoon, afternoon, sit here, read a book, very chill out for Most importantly, the loot. If there's nobody in there. Good morning, Gino. Get your act together. And this is the loot, which is quite nice actually. There's even a shark, which I would recommend you don't use to conserve water, but there is a hot shark. And there's also a Bukhari for cold days. These are not cold days. Pretty, eh? Yeah? Ah, look at the view. You even got view. Put your little speaker here. Play some nice music. To drown out inappropriate noises. And I have a long, languorous bath. Awesome. Let me show you my little pigeonhole. So, how, how, now, coming back to that. This happens to me all the time, if I'm not paying attention. People see a Gora in India and they give him the nicest room. Johan is going to have to pay for that. Well, he's got a fancy room. What nonsense. By fancy by... Well, Ballu Home Play Center. Alright. Okay. I put this so that the doggies don't go rummaging through my stuff for food. Is there a light in here? It's rather dark. There is a light. So that's, that's my room. Come on in, Baba. That's my room. It's uh, people would say it's uh, wholly adequate, and uh, yeah, they've even got some nice fresh flowers. Very nice. Who put these flowers here? I didn't notice them before. And as you can see, Dada, I am all packed and ready to go. Here's my satchel, my pretty satchel, pretty things, people. What would we do without pretty things? All right. I admit, I wouldn't have picked Ballu Homestay. Even though we have a lot of fun on our travels, shooting is hard work and you really don't want any extra challenges arising out of living quarters. But I'm so glad Johan insisted that we spend at least a night here. What an atmospheric place. I've actually found out about this NGO, uh, which is a stray animal rescue center. Oh. They run an organic farm and you can stay there and stuff. Wow. So Where is it? It is some 10 kilometers roughly outside of uh, Dharamsala. You think we can just walk in? Yeah, let's go and check it out.
located in Danutu, a gorgeous village half an hour's drive from Dharamsala, this animal rescue center, organic farm and small-scale social enterprise all rolled into one welcomes walk-in visitors. Hello, how are you? Hi. Nice to meet you. Hey, Alex, I'm your dad. This is your home. The farm rescues injured stray animals. There's a cow shed, a clinic, dog kennels and animal ambulances. The animals are released back to where they were found after they recover. This is our large animal area. Mostly it's cows. We do have one pig, one goat, one sheep, one right. mule. But mostly we uh, rescue dogs and cows. All other animals people eat so we don't get to rescue them. Okay. Uh, oh. What happened here on this one? So what happens is like uh, uh, most of the cows, once they are old, are abandoned. Right. And uh, because then they are not of uh, much use to the dairy farmer okay. and once on the street they go into farms of course because they're hungry mm. and then unfortunately people who are trying to protect their crop they get angry and they hit them with whatever they have we get cows wow. with uh, injuries from a sickle a stick one bull got uh, boiling hot water poured on him really? so his skin really melted uh, so yeah wow. and then you have a lot of calves because also male calves are not useful right. uh, for the farmer. So either they are starved to death or abandoned. Wow, that's brutal. This is the latest calf that came in. She's the nicest calf I've oh. seen, Tofu. Oh. And her mother's name is Soya. Wow. So they were literally pushed out of a truck near a government cow shelter here. And since those guys don't have medical facilities, right. they are just a shelter. Uh, we were oh. called and we rescued these guys. So you guys bring them in here and you give the care to them and then after they've been healed, they go back to that cow shelter or do you... They go back on the street unfortunately because okay. all government cow shelters are beyond capacity. Oh. And the mortality rate there is high anyway. So what we do is uh, we pick them, we release them back on the spot where we pick yeah. them from which is not ideal but yeah. we don't have a solution. Oh. This is Radha. Radha is peeling uh, bananas for the afternoon snack. For oh. which animal? For all the cows, all the dogs, the pig. Everybody oh. loves bananas. Oh. So bananas and oh. rotis are the common snack. So Radha is our para vet in training. Okay. Para vet in training. Congratulations. This is Sanju Baba. Sanju Baba. Sanju. I know a Sanju Baba. <laughs> <laughs> so I know Sanju. a Sanju Raju. So Sanju is a special goat. Uh, so usually, you know, like goats are sacrificed, uh, but this is a live, so goats like Sanju, they are offered as a live offering to temples. Okay. But then after that, they're just left there and they wander off and they get in accidents. They don't, they have to fend for themselves. So Sanju came because he had a head injury. Uh, you know, see one of his horns is broken oh. and he came with a big maggot wound. Oh wow. And so once he was healed and he was really like shut down, but once he was here, he was more feisty and uh, engaged. So we decided to keep him here. Also, we don't want like, you know, uh, like if we release him, there's a good chance like a drunk guy might actually oh, oh. eat him. Oi, 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 whoa. <laughs> He's Pablo. Yeah, Pablo pa Raja. Pablo Raja. <laughs> Pablo Raja. In Himachal, there's a lot of animal sacrifice. I see. Uh, but this is a special type of goat where it's offered Live, live and not killed. And then doesn't hang around in the temple anymore after that? No, afterwards they just kind of wander what? about and they're confused as to what to do and then they leave. Oh, no wonder. Oh, he stole it. <laughs> he took his food. What's the donkey? We have met a you. mule. What's his name? Oh, he's a mule. His name a is Charlie Horse. Charlie Horse. Charlie has never been saddled, I think. Charlie Horse. Uh, totally, all his life probably. So he has been like, you mules are used for carrying like loads right. and they're overloaded right. and then eventually their knees give out and they swell up and then they use a hot rebar to drain the knees. Wow. So they keep on working them until the animal is just like unable to carry load. So then that's when they find their way. Right. Yeah. This you know, is, you know, I'm flinching as I hear you talk, but yeah. I think that maybe people need to see this stuff, you know, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. That's the hope. I mean, you know, it takes both things. It takes awareness right. and then it also takes intention to act on it because 
you are aware the next step is to change your consumption patterns which have been destructive and that's where uh, it's tricky you're right yeah. yeah changing your life for something you believe in and eh? but that's, you obviously done that yeah it took some effort <laughs> definitely you're not from here i think uh i'm from delhi so and uh, most of my adult life i was in states uh, in us and then uh, so i was running a tech company there right uh which i exited in 2011 because i mean although i had ticked all the boxes i was conventionally successful i didn't really have to work for my lifestyle anymore yeah i wasn't happy i'm amazed by just how many people we've met in our travels who have taken the step to leave their lives and careers in the city and moved to do something that they feel injects meaning into their lives i run into riley who is from california and is on her third volunteering okay. stint here So this whole building this is where people stay when they come here to volunteer. Yeah, so this is our farm stay. So the okay. co-founders all live here full time. Okay. And then we have a couple of staff who live here and then all of our volunteers can stay here as well. Okay. Mm. Where, where are you from? I'm from California. Okay. But you have been volunteering with this place like time and again or? Yeah, this is my third time back. Oh, wow. I I keep coming back. <laughs> yeah. How yeah. long do you stay when you come to Pickle? As long as I can. Yeah. Um this time will be my longest. I'll be here at least 8 months. Oh wow. Yeah. That's like I that's get addicted like huge to it. Amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there like any recommended time that you put on people for them to come like one month minimum or is there like time slots or We usually do like a 2 week uh maximum for most people because oh. we want to involve and inspire as many as we can. Okay. But of course we really value long-term volunteers right. especially if they have a skill they can share with us. Sure. The organic farming is a running experiment at the farm with little or no previous experience in agriculture. Robin and his team have been growing grains, roots, vegetables and fruits for themselves and fodder for the cows. farm kitchen this really is nice. where we nice. all eat so we have common meals all the volunteers and all us uh, like the founders long termers uh, this is where we also make products oh. for sale i mean so the, we started products to get our name out there okay as like kind of a marketing campaign but now this is what primarily funds the project oh, really? too Com- yeah kombucha kombucha what is kombucha? kombucha i've heard of this it's a it's fermented black tea it's really great for your gut Oh really? Yeah, it originated in Asia, then popularized by US, and then back so to being popular in India. Probiotic, basically. Probiotic yeah, beverage. Very. Can we have? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I've not been really always, always there. Being our welcome. But there's no, it's fermented, but there's no alcohol in it. Uh, very minuscule. Oh, it depends on the culture you're using. So yeah. the culture I'm using, it is uh, no, very little alcohol, if any. Well. And why don't you tell me? Yeah, I can ask you ask me, John. All right, cheers to cheers to people fun. Thank you very much for having us over. Of course. Very kind of you, Robin. <laughs> Like your signature thing. Here we are. <laughs> you know, it's not a takia kalam. You know, like a popular refrain. <laughs> But this entire city is on a ridge, huh? Yeah, it's two narrow streets separated by four meters of shops in the middle. This and this. Yeah, it gets very narrow in the middle, and this is like the central square of Macleodgunge. That is the. What is that? That is the Dalai Lama's house. Yeah, right? the far oh. one you can see in the distance is yeah. the temple complex. Yeah. Too black kung. Monastery, I think it's yeah, called. Monks everywhere. That's yeah. also a nice spot. Yeah, look at this spot. That entire structure is brand new. Though. Should we walk around the streets? You want to buy yeah. something, obviously. Yeah, well, obviously. I want to eat something. <laughs> What about the pastry shop? No, no, no. <laughs> I think some Tibetan food is in order. It's a quaint little town, essentially just a settlement of houses and shops along a narrow ridge.
market is, well, predictably, meant more for tourists than residents. There are street food vendors, souvenir shops hawking typical Tibetan jewellery and curios, and stores selling woolens to visitors who've landed up ill-equipped to handle the cold. Video Game Parlours Children from the 1990s will remember just how synonymous these were with hill stations. Johan has no idea about that, so we're going to have a go. Things have changed a bit. Instead of the arcade games that you could slot a rupee coin into, now you can get cheap thrills with a basic virtual reality setup. It's a no-brainer that we want to try some Tibetan fare while we're here. Curiously, none of the numerous Momo stalls are manned by Tibetans. That's not true of the restaurants though. We find an atmospheric little eatery by the side of the road and dive in. Johan and I are in Dharamsala and Miklodganj in Himachal Pradesh. Now no person in his or her right mind would head back to the plains at a time when the summer is at its very worst in North India. Johan finds yet another brilliant homestay in Sitpur just at the foothills of Dharamsala that also conveniently happens to be right next door to the Tibetan Norbulinka Institute that he's very keen to visit. Crucially, we are a fair distance from Dharamsala which means we don't have to deal with the crazy tourist traffic. When we do enter the city, we do so on foot and that turns out to be a great idea because we end up spending the day trekking across Dharamsala, Miklodganj and Dharamkot with strategic stops for meals at some truly marvellous cafes. Don't miss our entirely inconsequential but riveting nonetheless adventures next week on We On Traveller.